It is all falling down and collapsing on itself. Truckers are boycotting New York, and the mainstream media, as expected, is just ignoring the whole thing like it's a simple situation. The truth is not like what they're saying, and to be honest, it's hard to really know what is happening unless you're willing to do the research. So we did, and Truckers for Trump is not just a slogan, it's real. But it even goes beyond that, and they're not the only ones skipping New York. And watch carefully, because the reason is not just Donald Trump, he's just the immediate cause for all of this. We all know the case, the mainstream media has been building up so much hype and coverage on it, but the truth has slowly faded within all these breaking news coverages that honestly don't describe the real scene that is unfolding. So we have to start from the beginning, when the former president Donald Trump got embroiled in a significant legal case in New York. An appeal at court has denied Trump's request to stay a civil fraud judgment of $454 million. And this decision has serious implications for Trump, as it requires him to post a bond for the full amount or face the possibility of his properties being sold to cover the fine. Trump's legal team has formally filed an appeal. The appeal is against a civil fraud judgment of $464 million, which includes the prejudgment interest that accrued on more than $350 million awarded against Trump and the Trump Organization. This judgment is a result of a lengthy trial based on claims made by New York Attorney General Letitia James. She alleged that Trump and senior executives at his company had committed fraud over several years by significantly overstating their assets on financial documents. This was done to secure favorable rates on bank loans and insurance policies that they would not have been entitled to otherwise. Trump has two options. He can either post a bond for the full amount or convince a judge to agree to a freeze or to accept a reduced amount. If neither of these actions is taken within a 30-day period, James's office will have the authority to begin seizing his assets. Meanwhile, the award will continue to grow by $114,000 a day due to interest, which is just absurd. But now the question is, how does it relate to truckers? I mean, the media seems to cover this court decision as the exact cause of all the truckers' frustration, but is it really? Is it that simple? One thing the nation knows for sure now is that Truckers for Trump is a real thing, and it is strong. So watch carefully, because we should just get into the details. The legal case against Donald Trump in New York has sparked a reaction among some truckers, there's no doubt about it. But the real thing that most media are not covering is the fact that this is not the first time truckers have voiced their protest. This particular one started with one trucker. This is Chicago Ray. He posted a video stating that some truckers have decided to stop making deliveries to New York City. He claimed that 95% of truckers support the former president and said the bosses of freight companies ain't gonna care if we deny the loads, we'll just go somewhere else. This has led to a social media trend with the phrase, Boycott NYC Trending. Now we have to be honest, this movement is far from an unorganized movement. A few days ago, Greg Fuller, founder and CEO of Freight Waves, a data reporting agency for global freight, was on TV, and he mentioned that 80% of all truck drivers in the US are Trump supporters. But he also said that nothing major will result from this boycott. Since it's not unionized and organized, even the person who started this whole thing online has taken down his video. But this whole thing just goes to show how frustrated truckers are. And you have to know, this is not the first time truckers have been involved in such scenarios. We've been down this road a couple of times, and sure, a large percentage of them support the former president, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a reason why they support him. All of this is just showing how much the working and actual backbone of the nations are frustrated, and it's only a matter of time till they show that pent-up anger. And let's face it, the real power is in their hands. Let me explain. Truck drivers are the unsung heroes, keeping the American economy humming. They handle the monumental task of transporting a staggering 70% of all freight across the nation, from groceries and medicine to construction materials and manufactured goods. Without their tireless efforts, these essential items wouldn't reach stores, businesses, and manufacturing facilities, causing widespread disruption. 
This vital role translates into a significant economic impact, with the trucking industry contributing over $792 billion to the US GDP and employing millions of people. But their impact extends beyond just numbers, as they act as the backbone of various sectors like agriculture, manufacturing, retail, and healthcare. They keep them operational and contribute to their success. Imagine the American economy is grinding to a halt, empty grocery shelves, shuttered factories, and transportation grinding to a standstill. These are just a few of the potential consequences. The immediate disruptions would be felt far and wide. Stores would face shortages of essential items like food and medicine, leading to panic buying and price hikes. Businesses reliant on just-in-time deliveries would be forced to shut down, leading to production halts and job losses. Even transportation itself would be impacted, with a lack of truck deliveries potentially causing gridlock on railways and at ports. On a personal level, the deliveries truck drivers make touch our everyday lives. They transport the food on our table, the fuel in our vehicles, and countless other necessities. But this is a free market, and if truckers don't want to deliver, then someone else will take that task on their shoulders. But what good will that accomplish? That would mean the market being flooded with inexperienced workers and potentially generating controversy that would impact the nation more than anything. The free market has a variety of mechanisms that could potentially mitigate the impact of a trucker's boycott in New York City. One of the immediate effects of a boycott would be a decrease in the supply of goods, leading to increased prices. These higher prices could incentivize other truckers who are not participating in the boycott to fill the gap and meet the demand. But it goes beyond that. Here's what I mean. If you know about the free market and the way this world operates, then you can clearly understand that the long-term effects could be even more significant. A domino effect would likely impact various sectors, leading to a potential economic downturn and potentially even a recession if every trucker stopped working. The undeniable fact is that if trucking becomes less viable, businesses will look for alternative methods of transportation, such as rail, air, or sea freight, depending on the type of goods and the feasibility of these options. In the event of a boycott of NYC, companies would be forced to raise prices to attract alternative truckers or redirect their existing fleet, which could result in increased costs and logistical complications. The absence of their services would lead to immediate and severe disruptions. Within just 24 hours, medical supplies could cease to be delivered, fuel shortages would emerge, and food shortages would begin to develop due to halted deliveries and subsequent consumer panic. Service stations might run out of fuel, manufacturing could face component shortages, and within a week, travel could cease due to fuel unavailability. Hospitals may begin to exhaust oxygen supplies, and within a month, the nation could face a severe clean water shortage. The market could also adapt by sourcing goods more locally to reduce their dependence on long-haul trucking, which could stimulate local economies, but this is not a feasible strategy for them in NYC. Rebuilding a reliable and efficient supply chain after such a disruption would be a complex and lengthy process, potentially leading to higher costs and longer waiting times for goods. But the last hope for the nation would be government policies. This could include subsidies, or alternative transportation methods, or policies to support the rapid adjustment of the market. And they've already started to make a move. New York Governor Kathy Hochul has addressed the issue, assuring law-abiding entrepreneurs that the fine on former President Donald Trump would not impact the state's business climate. But that is just what they said. The real truth is that business owners are looking at NYC with a bit of hesitation when it comes to investing and working there. Some analysts have discussed the potential impact on businesses, with concerns that the case could drive businesses out of New York due to fears of similar prosecutions. If it happened to him, then who knows who is next? And let's be honest, the measures that NYC took against him are just unbelievable. But it also sets a precedent that could affect other businesses. The court imposed significant penalties, including large cash fines, outside supervision of his company, and restrictions on his borrowing. This could lead to increased scrutiny on businesses and their financial practices. Moreover, the penalties include a ban on Trump from serving as an officer or director in any New York corporation for three years, 
This could lead to questions about the leadership and future direction of businesses associated with Trump. This just goes to show how deeply government policies and real-life conditions are not aligning. Just look at the Texas border crisis. The federal government and the state are facing each other in what should have been a combined effort. But if you'd like to know more, check out our channel because we've made a video on it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.